welcome back to another episode of Unlimited Abundance with your host, Paulina Baragova. I am a coach, healer, leader, as well as a jewelry designer and creator of the jewelry brand Lift Your Frequency. If you're watching the video version of this podcast, you can already see today I'm wearing another new stack, which I'll discuss later, but also I'm a podcast host, obviously, as we're here today. So welcome back to this episode. I'm so happy to hear that we are loving the video version of this podcast. So if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, then you're probably just listening to the audio. But if you ever want to watch the video version and follow along that way, then the video version is available on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, which I'll have linked in the keynotes of this podcast. Um, my YouTube channel is just my full name, Paulina Baragova, PB. If you're watching this on YouTube, then welcome back. I love having these on YouTube as well because it's just a really beautiful way to have a long format video. And it really, to me, just feels like a long vlog. Like, I feel like we're just having a long vlog and a long conversation today. And it just feels very, very personal. And I love it. I love video content. I'm definitely also a video content kind of person. I really connect well with people in person and over video. And so I'm really excited to have it offered as a video too. I know a lot of you guys are really enjoying it and love getting your DM. No, my nose is stuffy. I'm really, really allergic to like uh dusts and like dust, dust and any kind of like animal hair. And I, I've had this my whole life and normally I can maintain it pretty well by keeping everything super, super clean. But recently, just in when you have a larger space, it's very hard to every day keep all the dust and for perfectly out of every single space, especially my office. It's a little bit obviously, it's you know, smaller than like my living or living room and things like that. And so in here I noticed that some dust gets really easily trapped. And so my nose can get really stuffy. We actually just ordered a like top of the grade, the best of the best, one of them, um air purifier. So I'll let you know how that goes. I've heard that that really helps. Obviously, you know, keeping your place clean. But if you're very specially sensitive to the point where like you're not gonna you know, vacuum and sniff your entire place every single day, especially if it's maybe on the larger side, it's not just like a quick sweep. Like when I used to live in an apartment, it was just a quick sweep and now in our house, you know, hours of work. And so uh, we got not, and obviously also the hairs are so small. So it's like, you really took to obviously vac vacuum and it, that, that doesn't even really help because it's in the air. That's the thing, like the dust particles and even the particles of animal hairs are like really in the air. Uh, and so it's really important to have an air purifier. We had one and it was okay quality. It was like a good, pretty well rated one, but it definitely wasn't like a pro grade like world renowned one and so we ordered a really amazing one so as soon as we try that I've heard really great things about it I'll let you know the brand and things like that I don't want to recommend it until I've tried it but I, we're planning on putting it in the bedroom at night and moving it to like our office area our both of our offices are next doors to each other my husband and I so we're going to place them like the, in over here so it kind of maybe I'll even place it in this room in my, my office and we'll kind of switch it back and forth and if we like that brand then we'll order obviously some more of them maybe some small ones from the office and then have that bigger one and one in the bedroom one in the living room I don't know but basically we just wanted to test it out so I apologize if I'm sniffly and it's like it goes in and out as well depending like where I am like I am just more of a tight room and normally I have the window open but I'm reporting so I don't want any noises uh we have neighbors who have kids I believe like three or four kids so they get a little crazy uh and so I just like don't like, like to keep the windows closed while I'm recording so Today, I want to talk about really the power of connecting with your body and your body as kind of like literally your compass and your guide to life and to decision making, right? Your body is literally this intuitive instrument. And even beyond that, it's like this quantum instrument that can communicate with you if you learn how to tune into it, the most magical messages. And it is so beyond life changing. So I really want to speak about your body as an instrument, your body as a subconscious, what is uh, the fascia in, in your body? where how our emotions kind of trapped ways to release them and overall how to just have great energy flow in your body day in and day out so that you're consistently your energy field is open and you're vital and you can feel the energy flowing through you and versus it feeling stuck and stagnant right when energy is stuck and stagnant in your body you will feel stuck and stagnant in your life, right? It's like very metaphorical. There's like that quote, a body of emotion is a life of motion where you move your body and the energy shifts, literally the energy in your field shifts. Of course, the energy in your life is going to shift. Like it almost sounds kind of obvious if you think about it, if you're in your kind of like egg, whatever, if, you, if you're inside divinity, um, which is my monthly membership where we have 
two live events every month and via Zoom, you get to keep the replays. Amazing. If you haven't joined, definitely join. I'll have a link down below. I always often in our meditations guide you to visualize your field or visualize yourself in this egg to really visualize the extension of energy around you and to really feel into it how why does it go what color is it to really feel energy permeate so you can always know that there is this web around you that's emanating from the body into this field around you and so the energy in that field changes right the energy obviously is going to change that's around that's in the reality so you kind of think of like your own egg is like your little quantum field like your personal universe your personal quantum field and then the um like life I like to visualize is like this other like huge egg this huge like golden matrix you could say of energy and so and those are really in relationship to one another in fact they're like quite they directly influence one another right kind of back and forth communication so people will probably say the opposite people will probably say like your energy influences your life but it's also the, what's going on in your life it loses your energy so I feel like it really is this like two-way communication and so when we get to shift our energy to our field we are very clearly going to see a change in the shift of the quantum field around us like moving our bodies and moving energy in our bodies is a daily practice just like brushing your teeth is right like you wouldn't brush your teeth on Monday and expect your teeth to be feel clean on Friday and in fact the more energy you're moving through your body more consistently the more you're needing to clear it out so what I mean by that there's different ways to move energy in your body. I think the most famous probably ways are like yoga and Pilates and things like that, especially yoga because of the specific poses that really drain the different limbs that really stretch out your fascia, your fascia. There's, it's a very fascinating web of like the skin under your skin. You can do your own research on it. It's wild. It's really becoming like the next big thing in the wellness and even health community. It's kind of like blowing up as this thing that was around that people didn't really know much about but really it's this kind of skin under your skin this web it's all communicating so there's tightness in your jaw in your pelvic floor it's going to create tightness in your draw jaw so the fascia is essentially kind of connected down your body and it goes all over all around and it flows energy through it and not just energy but literally like like life-changing signals it's like your body communicating with each other it's like your gut communicating to your brain and your brain communicating to your heart and all of these really cool signals occurring and this is all happening quicker than the speed of light so if you're new to fascia it's really cool to research and i listen to quite a bit of podcasts on it and i find it so fascinating and i'm eager to hear but all the new research that comes out of it uh, as it continues to evolve but essentially or like the people continue, we get, begin to discover it's not that it's going to continue and evolve it's already so powerful it's just that we as humans are only beginning to at least i don't say we i should say the scientific maybe community is more beginning to understand it versus different body uh body work practitioners and wellness practitioners have known about this for a while and what i mean by that is we may you might know you might not know but the body stores emotion it stores energy right and what is an emotion? Emotion is an energy in motion. So whether it's the emotion of sadness, shame, anger, grief, fear, these are all essentially just energies, right? And we really are not taught, and nor are we taught how, I would say, where, when, like we haven't, we're not really taught how to process emotion. It sounds kind of like almost innate or intuitive, but it really, really isn't. That's why sacred and safe spaces are so needed to process emotion, to let it to clear through, right, to a, give yourself that space to learn and feel safe for the emotion to come up, to feel safe in feeling it, and when, once you feel it, it literally releases, right, so when you, and different emotions have different weights and charges, so one emotion you might experience for an hour and then you feel it, maybe you have like a somatic release, like you cry or something, and then before you know it, it's completely gone. Another emotion, maybe you feel it for like four or five days or even a week, it depends on a lot of factors, right? It depends how like deep set the emotion is. It depends like the deep depth that you're allowing yourself to really process it and feel like it's so individual, like so individual that it's really hard to say. Essentially, this is why these spaces are needed and why it's so important for us to learn how to process and sit with emotions so that we can clear them through. They get trapped super subconsciously. It's not like someone is like, I'm not going to let myself feel this emotion. Like it's a very subconscious process, right? An emotion may arise in your body and maybe you don't have time in that moment. Maybe it's too much in that moment. I'm like hundred percent, I understand. I've been there. Sometimes we just, I'm holding a lavender essential oil in my hand. Uh, but some sometimes we just don't have the time or the space or energy, but then we forget to carve it out later just because in that moment we don't give it space. Essentially we suppress it 
does not mean that that emotion is disappearing. It actually means that it's, it's sinking into the body at some level and being stored. And often is tension, right? Like you might feel tension in your shoulders, in your neck. You might feel a lot of tension in your arms. You might feel tension more like in your lower back. You might feel tension in your legs and your hips, right? Everyone's very different. And in fact, usually different emotions are associated with different parts of the bodies at times, in the body at times, right? You might know like this in traditional Chinese medicine, there's this approach and a lot of other um, practitioners and people who have more of a holistic outlook also different, definitely associate like different aspects, different emotions in different parts. For example, when I work with women a lot, um, the energy I have to see stuck around like the hip area or in the sacral chakra is like shame. And it might be like the most, it might be so subtle, right? Like the person might not even know it's there until we do a session together. And I'm, by the way, if you're interested, I am taking one-to-one -one clients again. I wasn't taking them for a really long time because I was really focused on coursework, but I am working privately with people again. So if you want to work with me privately, then just check out the description or the keynote and you can see the uh, application. And if we're fit, I'll reach out to you. And it's a very, very easy process. I know some people are like, oh, application, but I just need to see that we are, I am able to help you and also with the volume people that have kind of been interested since I've opened it I need to definitely have like an application process so uh, check that out there but let's say we're doing like an energy emotion release session someone might not know that that's there like they literally might not even when we start the session and I ask them what they want to work on it might be so completely like something completely different we might be working on like something career related or just like something completely different and we get to the session and we find that the most emotion is stored like for example in their in their hip or pelvic region and they're crying and they're releasing and also what I think is beautiful is that you don't need to know where when is it from to release it so this is where i think the flaws or limitations of traditional therapy lives like talk therapy like in my opinion well first of all i want to say two things to so many of the clients that have come to me have done years of therapy and have seen better results working with me in a few sessions like literally one to ten even usually more with clients my clients stay with me for at least a few months because you know, it takes time to do deep work, but as an example, then in years of therapy, I'm not saying that to toot that my own, toot my own horn, there's way other, other wellness people, and there are other practitioners as well who have a similar experience. It's a theme that people who are just in talk therapy without doing the energy work, the somatic work, the work with the body, it's just going to limit you, right? And I think like, okay, you go to therapy, you find out why you have this behavioral thing or this trauma or whatever, you know why that's still just very cognitive right like that's not going to release it from that point you're still going to have to go into the body and release it you might know oh I'm carrying shame from this or I'm carrying anger or resentment from this and like okay great you've spent all that time I need to find that out but that emotion is still in the body so the beautiful thing about this kind of like I don't want to say shortcut but when you just go straight to your body you're able to much more quickly address that you might just feel the emotion and maybe you do know where it's from maybe instantly it flashes back to you and you very clearly are like oh I know that this is from this relationship or this situation or when I was younger or whatever it may be and or from this person like you very clearly know maybe you don't know maybe you're like I don't know why I have that energy or that emotion there but you've released it and now you feel a hundred times better right so it's really important to understand that emotions, like I was saying, get stuck subconsciously. They get stuck when we suppress them, give them space to become processed. And this is why I find it so important to have a consistent space where you're processing your emotions, which, which can look like a variety of things, which I'll talk about. So one thing, of course, is the layers to it. There's like emotional layers, and physical layers. Honestly, in my opinion, yoga is one of the best ways, even a super small flow. So for me, in my practice, I ship my workouts pretty much every week, depending on my mood cycle. Something I'm really, really big on is cycle syncing or aligning your life to your cycle. I have a course, actually one of my best-selling courses now. It's really exciting, which I can, that means a lot of women are clearly waking up to this. So if you're a woman and you want to dive deeper, I really suggest taking my course called The Feminine Awaken. It's only a three-module course. Each session is about two hours, a little bit, sometimes a little bit more, so about six to seven hours, I believe, maybe a little bit more of content. So it's really, really powerful, but you're walked through a whole array of things. And there you're what we really walk through your cycle and the archetypes and aspects of every part of your cycle. So your menstrual, your follicular, your ovulation, your luteal. I explain every single part of your cycle, what's going on during your body during the cycle, and what do's and don'ts you could say. And these are just, of course, general guidelines. And it's sometimes things don't fall on the appropriate day for example I have something that's a kind of a big event but it's literally going to fall on the day before my period <laughs> and like that wasn't something I could you know plan or move around so 
of course there's life but it's also just to really do what you can to really align your life to your cycle so we go through all the archetypes how your energy is going to shift through those things it's either of course we also do womb healing so releasing anything that's in the womb we do ancestral healing we activate pleasure in the body kind of really activating that feminine pleasure and uh, create, creating magnetism in your life and teaching you what magnetism is energetically and practices that you can do to create it and walking you through a myriad of practices it's like amazing and you get to keep the whole course when you get it so i know a lot of women who take it go back to the videos they redo the womb healing they redo the ancestral healing they redo those practices that they love whatever they're called to so that's something really like if you're a woman i really suggest taking that course especially if you want to get more into like the feminine energetic arts and really activating like that goddess i know it's like that word is so overused but genuinely like that super powerful feminine archetype within you that is like the go-to course it is like so juicy to the brim like i get so passionate talking about it like it's literally one of my favorite courses i've made of it. i genuinely just like love it and the experiences women have in it is like the most profound thing like it literally sometimes i see it like genuinely 180 shift in the person like before they were shy maybe they had insecurities after they're like literally like a seductress <laughs> like feeling so confident their life sliding their magnetic people are commenting that things are flowing to them opportunities they're feeling pleasure like it is crazy especially because like i'm saying it's not that long of a course and it's so 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 powerful so i'll have a link to the keynotes i really suggest that and you can probably look on my instagram highlight for all the testimonials of everyone who's taken it pretty amazing stuff so anyway why i was saying about that is i changed my my workout to whatever part of my cycle i'm at right so when i'm ovulating i like to do more high intensity workouts because i know my body can handle it at that time so like i like really love to peloton i find obviously your testosterone is also you know higher at that point so at things like more high intensity workouts are more appealing to your body like right now I'm in my luteal phase I would not be going to the peloton at the moment um and your follicular as well I like to do more weights for example so like pilates plus weighted things plus I always try to incorporate um my like on most days or like if I can a mini yoga flow because again it really helps drain your lymph nodes it helps move the energy and it's really like you're really it's a very much like a strength and stretch and rigging things out like that's the beauty of yoga it's so much strength it's flexibility and also all the different twists and turns are a allowing energy to flow in very specific ways in your body if you study yoga you know um and it's really you know it's an ancient practice for a reason and it's so well regarded so powerful people are obsessed with it for a reason it also allows you to um like i said like squeeze particular organs and really allow energy to kind of release the specific parts so i always try to incorporate that when possible so that's one way i would really suggest is doing yoga flows and you feel it like i'm sure if you've ever taken a yoga class you know how your energy feels before and after i had a phase like for a whole month i literally went to hot yoga every single day i remember i challenged myself i was like i'm gonna go every single day and it was like this such a life-changing experience genuinely because it brings you to such deep connection with your body and it just releases whatever is you know inside you we really are like sponges like of course wear your protective crystals have boundaries etc but like through life events we have different emotions and we have different experiences and we're meant to they're meant to be really powerful guides and allow us to reflect on our life and maybe shift us in different directions like we have an, an emotion of creativity or emotion of joy so that leads us to something or maybe we have a uh, emotion of anger or something we transmute into action or maybe we feel sadness and it allows us to release something that we've been holding on to to then feel clear right like emotions are very intelligent and so in that space to be expressed that's one way that i love i think movement but especially movement not just like something that's just high intensity but something with like that stretch and release so it's like even if you just do like one yoga flow or like a few like five to ten minutes of it it's going to be really really powerful so that's kind of one of my favorite ways another one of my favorite ways is um massage and you can do it like self-massage too so there's like layers to it so well it's like just things that help drain your lymph nodes and move the energy. So I'm going to kind of break it down a few categories. One, jumping on a small trampoline. I'm sure you might, you might have heard the hype around this, or maybe you know why, maybe you don't know why there's so much hype around it. Five to 10 minutes of jumping on the trampoline, like intent, there's lots of research on this action, a lot of studies about it. It really helps drain your lymph nodes. I need to do this more. I have a, uh, a trampoline in our yard and I literally got it last year because I remember I saw so many people with it and I was like, I need to do this trampoline thing too. And I said, my friend had one and she's like, oh, it's really great to drain your lymph nodes. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. No wonder I was intuitively drawn to it. I need to personally do that. That's a really just great way. You know, it's like a one-time investment and you can have a trampoline 
in your house and just jump for five minutes like put on your favorite song like I don't know just like just like be like a child to me it's so childlike to jump on the trampoline like it's so fun I like generally want to do this after I finish this podcast and go jump on the trampoline but jumping on the trampoline and then so first in terms of self-massage there's a few things you can do you can get on a roller and I'm sure on YouTube there's so many videos of how to roll yourself out it's also like a famous woman who's like kind of known for her rolling methods I don't remember her name but I'll put her name in the keynotes um but essentially you could like you know roll your body out on the roller you can even use like a lymphatic drainage tool I have one of those as well like a body like almost like a gua sha for your body in a way like mine looks like essentially like this big u shaped kind of thing upside down u that you pull up but there's um different it's like a bot it's essentially like a body tool if you're watching the youtube I want to like I can show you on here uh what it looks like like it's like if you look at body gua sha it'll come up yeah like like a like a there's many of them right there's like different kinds they're like there's like different scraper tools like that. So I'm just showing you on here if you're watching the YouTube video. But essentially, it's like um, there's like a many many brands. Like there's this brand De La Heart. I see Necessaire has one. Like I see that Anthropology has like a body gua sha tool. Like it's you know like I'm just gonna show you. Kind of, there's many different kinds. Mine looks more like this one, not exactly, but there's ones that are like this with like a handle, and then there's ones that are like just mine looks more like this. So mine looks more like. It's like kind of like a U like that. And essentially your your lymphs are more, all of it, like you're essentially wanting to always brush up towards your heart or down towards your heart. So for me, when I'm dry brushing and I'm like, let's say starting from my jaw, I'm going from my jaw down to my heart, right? And it's ideal that's also, I guess, look at that, perfect. It's also another way to really powerfully help your body drain your lymph nodes, which your lymph nodes are different than your fascia, but it's kind of all intertwined. You're supporting that flushing of your body. So like you always want to go to your heart. So again, if I'm doing it from my jaw, the dry brush, I would be doing it down to my heart. Or let's say if I have a facial gua sha, say facial, you want to go both ways, but let's say I was trying to drain my lymph nodes, I would be going like from my neck all the way down to my heart. And then when I'm dry brushing from my legs, I would be dry brushing all the way up from the bottom of my legs, all the way up to, towards my heart, essentially, right? So the same thing with the body massage tool. I like to do it after a shower. I put on like oil and then do it and like kind of, you know, it definitely is, is it's inspiring me to do it again more often, right? There's like so many self-care practices I feel like Jenny like like a thousand you could do today I need to get better at this but it and like going up your body that's really going to help release tension and things like that and there's so many tools like they're actually kind of like blown away blown away okay I just want to show you for example on detox market there's one that's like a 15 dollar one mine essentially looks like this one uh, I can link it down below for you guys as well so that's another thing the self obviously also getting getting deep body work is amazing too now I know it's obviously a bigger investment especially to do it consistently um, but every once in a while what I would suggest is to get a massage when you're feeling like you're really emotionally overwhelmed because it's going to help release those emotions so of course I ideally right it'd be amazing to get one every single week but like I was saying that is definitely you know, a bigger investment but what I do suggest is to do it when you feel like a lot of emotion because what that's going to do especially if you're going to someone who's doing really great deep massage and it does take time for to find a good masseuse like I'm going to be honest I've had some shitty massages and I've had some amazing massages I have a really great woman that I go to and there's another place that I want to try that I used to love in the past so but definitely finding someone that you like a style that you like uh, if you can find a place that does lymphatic drainage massages those are amazing there used to be a place when I used to live in Beverly Hills that was like uh, in West Hollywood that was like a French place that did like really deep like face and body uh lymphatic massages and it was literally amazing but they closed like, I think they're supposed to reopen so I should check but that was like amazing so if you can find that even better but whenever you're just feeling like emotionally heavy this would be really good to do so how whatever that is right just trust your intuition if you're like you know what like I have I know for me I felt like I've had like an emotional week or whatever I can feel my body is like I need a massage and not like in a escapism way but like oh my gosh I need someone to like just release all the stuff in my body so like I was saying to kind of come full circle you this is like a day it really is a daily practice but you don't need to make it overwhelming right so like literally if you just do five to ten minutes of yoga flow a day like a very simple flow I'd love to like make a video on one the one that I do uh, I did at my retreat so if you were at my retreat in Sedona in March we like I led like the flow that I love to do and everyone's asking me like what kind of yoga is this like what style is this and it was like I was like it's just like a blend of Pilates and yoga that I found works for me um so you know just five to ten minutes or 
to do something different every day if it's too much, right? Like, I don't want to overwhelm people. I think that I'm one of the people who, like, is an, ex- sometimes an extremist. So, like, if I'm like, interested in something, I'll be, like, balls to the wall. Like, I'll do the yoga and the body massage and the gua sha and the dry brush and the trampoline. Like, I can get like that. I'm also a Gemini. <laughs> so, but I get that, like, some people get really overwhelmed. So, just make it, like, a 10-minute thing a day. Like, like be like okay I'm either gonna jump on the trampoline for five to ten minutes or like maybe five minutes and then I'm gonna do five to ten minutes of yoga that's already that's just 15 minutes a day that's gonna release so much emotion then maybe in the evenings or the mornings or like whenever I get a chance maybe just a few times a week I use the body tool and a dry brush the dry brush is really easy by the way to incorporate like I just do it before my shower like it t- takes like three minutes three to five minutes like I do it really I mean I'm sure people do it for longer so like I definitely suggest dry brushing I think if you make it a habit it's so easy in the beginning I said never make it a habit and just like do it when it was convenient but now I just literally put on the shower and like my mind just grabs a dry brush and we go for it um so that could be another really sick thing to incorporate also like I said the body lymphatic tool that I need to be better about too I'm not gonna lie you guys like I sometimes I put it away I need to get it back out but that one's really good to really move things so all those things are gonna let you it sounds like these simple things but all of these things every so think about it if every single day you're giving your body the chance to release the emotion that's stuck imagine how good you're gonna feel like genuinely imagine how good you're gonna feel and also I'm sure if you guys are frequent yogis or just like love daily movement you know the difference when you're working out consistently or moving your body in a nourishing way consistently how you probably feel more mentally clear you mean you literally can feel emotions or like some of them do yoga and like tears will literally come out of my eyes so clearly like some emotion was stuck there you know um and you're letting emotions release you're letting your body stretch you're letting your fascia kind of stretch you're letting your body release that tension and any stuff it's holding on and if you're doing that every day like think about how beautiful that is and how the, like how good you're gonna feel like I promise you once you start doing it you will be able to go back for me if I don't work out or like I, I think the word work out just has this like I don't know very like hustle culture connotation for me like movement is like medicine like it literally is nourishing to my body um so especially like the movements that I like that like more like yoga Pilates kind of stuff so if I don't move for like two days three would be like oof, like I feel it and like sometimes when I'm like on vacation if I'm like I remember like I was in Tulum for my birthday I didn't really like move or stretch as much and my body really really felt it so you know just do really prioritize that because you really will feel such a huge difference and it's something that you can do like yourself every day and how it's going to improve your life in such drastic ways because you're not only going to be carrying less emotion every day but you're going to be clearer so we are vessels right so spirit or god the universe is always communicating with us so if, if you're holding on to a bunch of gunk and you're feeling dense and heavy and stagnant and stuck you are not going to be a like we talk about vibrationally it's going to be more difficult to be vibrationally on that frequency to receive and second of all energetically you're closed it's like how is someone going to move into a house that is like packed with there's no room to move in? So it's like, how is inspiration or guidance going to come into your body? It's heavy and stagnant and stuck. And you can feel it in people's energy, like when the energy is really heavy and versus when it's open. I think it's just so obvious. Like I don't know if I can name names, but for example, I ran into this girl yesterday. Uh, I went to like my pole studio to practice and <laughs> I guess that this is offensive at all because she's not even like someone who I see in classes consistently or anything like that because some of my poll friends <laughs> listen to my podcast but someone I've never seen before uh and she just had a really heavy energy like I could tell like just looking at her eyes I think the eyes are like you really could tell just like really really heavy and not like I'm not like I'm not saying this in a judgmental way but like I'm sure that if that same person if she got, had like did like 15 minutes of movement and like stretch and felt any emotions just in 15 minutes to an hour could have come completely different energy because we are the beings and we are circulating energy so yes at different times we can hold different energies I can tell you a funny story like one day I was just like having off day I was like really irritated and my energy was clearly very like heavier off and I literally was at Erlon and I was like in the checkout line at the hot bar getting my combo plate Erlon's a grocery store in LA by the way and like the woman was like not even being that rude to me and I was just like I was just so bitchy that day I'm being really honest and my energy was like so heavy because I felt I, I probably didn't move that day and I just I don't know what it was like I think it probably was maybe my luteal phase I, I think she like I she wanted me to put me on the floor and like I felt it was so crowded there and I okay anyway like it was a whole thing but essentially like my energy was heavy but that didn't define me just because that one day my energy was heavier off that's not who you are right unless you let it become who you are unless you let that be you every day and unless you let that become your identity and you have the choice to move I know we're all busy 
but you can find 15 minutes a day to transform like literally transform your energy you guys it's not even just like I feel a little better like you are if you understood and I'm sure right now as we're talking about it, you do what you're doing but like under a like a full spiritual physical and emotional level you're literally releasing stagnant emotions you're literally creating space energetic space in your body to receive you're shifting your frequency you're releasing tension you're literally letting the fascia release any stuff it's been holding on you're letting your limbs drain like like do you understand like how life-changing that is right and like I I think a lot of people love different practices like yoga and Pilates, but don't even know fully why they love it they just feel better after which is enough reason I, when I first was doing Pilates for years and for a long time like I just liked it because I knew that I felt more clear after I felt more in my body I think that's a really big one like I just felt like oh like I am in this bitch you know <laughs> um not this bitch this beautiful vessel but you know what I mean um <laughs> but I was like I just felt more grounded and more connected and that's a whole other conversation is that it's so important to be in our body especially spiritual especially if you're like more intuitive and you're on a spiritual journey a lot of times what happens and I say this with my clients is we become all of our energy floats upward so we become like very like in our upper chakra so you're like in your throat your third eye and your crown and you like you can sense things and you might feel very floaty and very daydreamy and all this other kind of energy but the thing is the secret is we manifest on the physical plane right like we will it starts energetically, but then when, when it gets dense enough, that's how we bring it down. We anchor it down, right? We create energetically that vision and the upper chakra, and then we bring it down through all of them to bring it into this physical manifestation. So when we are disconnected from our body, we're really disconnected from so much of our power. Connecting with your body is so important, so powerful because A, like we spoke about all the health benefits and feeling benefits and spiritual and emotional benefits, but it's also how you're going to create. And I know that it's very easy to be in the mind and to be in those daydreamy chakras. And I feel like I definitely have phases of that as well. And obviously there's time and place for everything, but it's really important to actualize your ideas. You might have beautiful ideas. You might have the most beautiful visions. You are connecting to amazing timelines and potentials and realities. And by bringing yourself home to your body, you're going to like, it's like all this energy, think about it. It's like all this energy floating above your head and you're going to like bring it down your body like a straw and anchor it in and so connecting it to your body is so 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 important and something that like, I I know I just really really like like really fine it sounds like so extra it's like oh move your body it almost sounds like when people say like, people talk about how important meditating is right we know I love I'm meditating like legend the best thing amazing we love meditation but movement oftentimes we put like we don't put such value on I find like we like it's like it's like it's nice to do or like a lot of us do do it when we can but like it really shifts your energy so much just like you know meditation shifts your brain waves say it shifts your frequency it shifts like the energy around you and most of this has been measured if not all of it has been measured but what movement does too is it releases so you already mentally yes meditation can mentally and energetically kind of align you but then through movement you like are able to clear blocks release emotions release tension create openness so that plus the po the, the cognitive the like the best plus an aligned brainwave state so that cognitive plus the physical it's going to make you feel limitless right of course the meditation is great in itself and of course just movement is great in itself but those two together integrated are so 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 powerful and so so important and I feel like it's even more important for women because well men as well of course but for women so many women are disconnected from their sexuality and their sensual energy and I'm sure if you're on Instagram and like the spiritual community you see this all the time like this is nothing new to you and if I'm like the first person to say this to you like welcome to your feminine awakening <laughs> but essentially our 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 life force isn't just like just should just, shouldn't just be associated with sex right so the energy that makes you that, that's like your libido essentially is like your creative energy so we in our society are so programmed to think that that energy is just associated with sex and that if you feel that energy like your libido rise like oh you just want sex like that that is like such a incorrect and limiting view when really that energy is like your force of creativity and when you're feeling that it means that you're feeling like the creative juices of life flow through you sure you could go engage in sexual activity and as you know like like if we think of it traditionally that would could create that could create a child right like that's that's how powerful that creative energy is um 
And then when we think about for projects, it's also the same energy that's going to allow you to create projects and ideas and innovations. And that is only felt through your body. You don't get like, you don't feel your like, you know, you, when you feel that libido rise, you feel it in your body. You don't feel it in your skull. You don't feel it in like, yes, of course, your thoughts can influence your libido, which you feel in your body, 100% like visions, <laughs> visualizations. Yes, your mind can influence the body's re response but you don't feel the arousal mentally right you don't feel it like it doesn't sound like this part of your head starts to feel it because it really is physical it's in the sacral chakra and if we're not connected to our body and even if we think we're connected but like we we're speaking about earlier you're holding on to so much emotion so much tension so much sex i'm sure you're listening to this right now and you're like i need to fucking do yoga today like i can feel it. i feel like some of you listening to this are like that's it like tonight we're stretching tomorrow like get my foam roll around we start start with this new routine today or tomorrow because it literally is so it is so powerful and so it's like if you are having all that stagnant energy then of course that creative life force that wants to flow through you doesn't have that room it's like trying to put a thick smoothie through like a straw that has like a bunch of like things stuck in the way you know that's a weird comparison but my husband makes it all the time I see his straw so it's like my subconscious but essentially it's just like that energy cannot flow so even if you desire the energy to flow and you want the energy to flow if you're holding on to shame fear anger frustration sadness worry anxiety doubt and it's all in your body how can light like that life force of creativity flow it wants to flow it like it's you know it's infinitely flowing in the cosmos or like in the eternal web of life but you need to make the space for it and so that's why i'm also really passionate about feminine work and feminine energetic arts because when you reconnect with your sensuality your sexuality you kind of like open those floodgates you kind of in that work clear out that shame you clear out those emotions you clear out anything that's in your way Even if you don't consciously know it you just clear everything out and you'll feel energy begin to flow which will positively affect everything right and i also believe that like movement is a very strong aspect of like any feminine practices because it brings you back into your body which is one of the core things like if you think about masculine versus feminine feminine is very much associated with being in the body present like like very much like a Taurus kind of energy, a Taurian energy, like sensual in the body, like here, now, physical. And masculine, we often think of as like more often as a mental energy, right? We think of it as like a thinking, a quick witted, like in a moving energy. And so for feminine practices, I always, it's so important to come back to the present, to come back to the now, to the physical vessel, right? Those things are so, so, so important. And so I know we spoke about so, so, so many things, but I just really wanted to bring this to your attention because like people, oftentimes when people want to manifest, they're like, doing all these things to manifest whatever it is like there's a myriad of things but if you're disconnected from your body or you have a bunch of block stagnant energy in your body do you see how that is clearly going to interfere with whatever it is you're desiring to create you could desire everything and you can do all the all the practices okay like you can do all the stuff but until you get into your body until you feel your energy like you feel like an openness in your body until you're feeling the energy really flow or you're feeling less stagnation or less tension you're not giving space for this new energy to flourish, for that chi to flourish, right? That's why a lot of people love acupuncture, right? Because they put place on the specific meridian points that allow the energy to flow back into your body again, and you can feel so good, and it can be so healing, like both emotionally and literally physically, is because that energy needs to move, and it's like, how are you trying to create from a vessel that needs to be cleared out? How are you trying to create from this space that's that has things that need to be released that need to be moved through that feels sticky and stuck and you can feel this in your own body right like you don't need me to tell you this I'm sure you can feel when you're flowy and open and aligned and you can feel when you're tight and I think also it's like my personal hypothesis is the more energy you're moving through daily the more consistent to be in your practice because you it's like the energy wants to continuously move at that speed and unless you're consistently making room it can get stuck a little bit easier so like for me I know it's a bit of one like so if I stretch today and did all my practices today tomorrow I still will feel tight unless I do them because it's like all the energy is like flowing 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 and it like wants to keep going at that pace so it needs to have like those gateways open it's almost like if water is flowing 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 and then after it's flowing for a long time maybe like the doors begin to close the water's not flowing as well for the water to keep flowing at that fast pace that it's been flowing through it, it needs to consistently make sure that the space is essentially clear 
clear to go and clear to flow through. So um, I find that it's also very important. I feel like the quicker you're moving energy through your body and the more you're moving energy through your body, the more you need to clear that. And I also find as well as I think a lot of maybe you relate to this, if you're more sensitive to things, then you're probably more sensitive to energy, which means you are being more sensitive to emotions and feelings in your body. Someone might feel an ache in their back and they just think of it as like normal. I don't think anything of it. It's just like, oh, whatever. Like it does it's not even like, um, it's just not a big deal or like it's not this doesn't stand out as much versus if you're really sensitive to your body for me when I wake up I've been doing a body scan which is really helpful I recommend doing it you like wake up and you feel in your body like where there's any tension so like right now if I can you can, you can even do it with me right now just like close your eyes if you need just to breathe if you can do it with your eyes open, if you're driving or if you're sitting, obviously you can just close your eyes just for a moment. Just need to kind of just like scan your body, like kind of like with the laser from the top of your head to the bottom. Start with your crown. Just kind of seeing how your head feels. Maybe bring it down to your shoulders and your neck. The you know, energy heat feels here. Does it feel like it's flowing? Does anything you feel stuck or sticky? Just taking a gentle note of it. Moving down to your shoulders. Seeing again here if you're feeling how the energy is flowing. Is it flowing quickly and abundantly? Or do you feel like some tension here? And then continuing to be gentle, bringing it down your back, down to your lower back. Ask yourself what are you feeling here? And you may feel your body communicate with you. You might feel a part of your body kind of like cry out or like send a, send a signal essentially. Feeling how it feels there. Maybe feeling the hip area. Does it feel tense here? Does it feel open? Bringing it down through the thighs to the kneecaps. How is this part of your body feeling soft and open? Bringing it down the legs into the feet. How are we feeling here to the toes? So taking note of anything you notice, observed. Maybe even going an extra step above, asking your body what it needs today, what energy you would like to receive today. Maybe it asks you for something super specific. Maybe it just gives you a word like ease or clarity or stretching. It might, it might be whatever it is. Just letting your body tell you what it would need today. You could just ask your body mentally or even out loud if that feels good to you. To your body, what do you need today? And seeing what that first word that pops up is. So beautiful. When you're ready, opening your eyes, maybe moving with that intention through your day. So for me, when I did this scan, I felt some tension or some stuff in my lower back, like my low, low, low back, which makes sense because I'm in my luteal phase. <clears throat> That's quite common to feel like tension here. So for me, it'd be really good if I could go on the roller and just stretch or even maybe use my hands to even massage it. I have a Theragun too, but I don't, I feel like that's a little bit different. I feel like it does move energy too, but I just like, I don't know, for me, it's like intuitively, I'm, I feel like the roll, like a roller or even like, I want, I really want to get some myofascial release balls, myofascial release balls to help, you know, like you roll on them and they help release tension. Those can be really good too. So yeah, ultimately, I hope that this conversation today just really sparked and maybe empowered you or reminded you about the power you have in your body to release emotion and to clear emotion. And I want to say that stress is not always bad. It can really build resiliency. I heard that on a podcast and it really resonated. It's just the way that we manage it and make sure that we allow it to process through our bodies instead of holding on. We let it move through us and make us stronger, perhaps, maybe even give us energy to take action, but we don't hold on to it. We don't hold on to the associated emotions either. We really give ourselves time and space to process. So giving ourselves really the space to connect with our bodies and to the wisdom to release whatever we're holding on to, like I was saying, to really process those emotions. That's why, again, I think it's important to have that space, again, in your daily practice in some way. But if you want to have it on a deeper scale for me, and I think that's why so many of you guys love divinity. Um, like I said, it's my monthly membership where we meet twice online because inside those ceremonies and rituals and workshops and events we do during the guided meditation, I really focus on letting you oftentimes process and release emotion. And so many messages be like, I was crying, I was releasing, like, 
I hear that so much and it's because it's like you're finally being held and I feel like sometimes to process and to release we do need to be held because it creates like a container it's almost like the masculine energy so when you're on the zoom call and you've invested in it and you're in the space and you're following along like you're you're, you're held right like you're not on your own you're held you're guided like you're supported you're, pe you're with people on this call from all over the world like you're in like a container essentially truly so you really feel safe releasing like for example, if I'm getting a massage, I would feel more safe, like kind of being like, ah, oh, than if I just lay on a mat by myself and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, because someone is holding essentially that's it really is an energetic phenomenon, in my opinion, like when someone is literally holding the space for you. So if you really want a monthly community of really, really powerful, amazing people from all over the world where we meet for these various events, like this month we already had our events, which was a hormonal balancing workshop and a um uh manifesting my new reality manifest my new reality uh work ceremony and ritual by the way if you still join today so when you listen to this it's still october you'll get instant access to both of those and both of those are pretty timeless and you can do whatever so if you join divinity today you can listen to the hormonal balance workshop and have the full replay you also have the full replay of the uh, my new reality manifestation ceremony and ritual which is really powerful to do right now if you're it just help you re-anchor and realign to a new vision of your future in your life like i've been talking about in previous podcasts also, with eclipses coming up next week with the, you know, on the 25th of October, like this is such a pivotal time. So if you, like I said, it's a really amazing space, the most amazing price point, like it's just genuinely like it could not get any better. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's always room to grow and improve, but essentially noticing it's really amazing. So I really suggest joining Divinity. And like I said, it's really cool because if you join, like as you're watching this, you'll literally get instant access. Like you can literally, as you're listening to this, join and you will have the video. You can do it tonight or tomorrow. Both of those videos, the hormonal balancing workshop and the My New Reality Manifestation Ceremony and Workshop. So really, I really suggest joining and also moving forward, you can join the live events. So uh, if you join today, then you'll get all the stuff from this month. But then on November 1st, you'll get all the live info and you'll be able to join all the live events next month. Plus, if you can't join the live events or if even if you did and you just want to re-listen to them, you'll get access to their full replays too so something i really recommend it's a really beautiful spiritual community with people all over the world so definitely join that and finally before i sign off also a little shipping update with lift your frequency obviously i hand make all of these beautiful pieces so we try to ship them out as soon as possible usually within i try my best to do within a processing time it can be five to seven days especially when i have a lot of orders so the quicker you get your order in the quicker you'll be able to receive it obviously today for all the youtube video you can see i'm wearing god is a woman one of our best sellers it has peach moonstone very feminine pleasure activating very like magnetic pleasure focused vibration uh freshwater pearl and a clear quartz chunk i love these charge up for your own custom program this is a new piece that hasn't launched yet but it's labradorite with a baroque pearl coming soon and then this is one of my favorites too i love this one because it layers with a lot of the pieces that we sell like this one would look good with so many of them it's called unconditional love and this is the 16 inch it has peach moonstone with like an ab coating these ones have a really beautiful ab coating too and a peach freshwater pearl and this one like i said looks amazing with the god of the woman because they're made out of you know the same stones uh, like in terms of like some pearl and then the peach moonstone just smaller like they're different styles but you know like pearl and then peach pearl and peach moonstone and then like a, uh, they're both peach moonstone with like a coating a b coating but these ones are a bit smaller and they're faceted i love this because it's so good with like all of our like with divine feminine radiance and with all those pieces so very very like feminine and transformative energy that i'm wearing on my neck today and i've been loving this combo you saw i wore this like last week i don't know i just love this combo i just something about it is just like yes so like i said if you get your order in i try to get them out as soon as possible to you so I hope you enjoy this podcast. If you want to connect with me further, you can always find me on Instagram at pbbuddy97yt. I have it linked in the description in the keynotes. But also for anything I mentioned, whether you want to join Divinity or take the Feminine Awaken or anything in between, I link everything for you so it's easy to find. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. It was so amazing to tune in here with you guys. I love you so, so, so much. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you in our second episode this week that'll probably be out on Thursday, I believe, um, as we're doing two podcasts a week. So come back on whatever pl podcast platform you're listening to. If you're still listening, hit your notification bell. I know everyone says this, but that way you'll just get notified. So even if you're not on social media that day, 
you're driving, you're doing your thing, you'll get a notification that a new podcast episode is live. So also if you're listening on YouTube, also place your notification. So you just know when new episodes are dropping, regardless of if you're on social media or not, or on even on your phone that much, like you'll be able just to get that notification for the next drop. And yes, I'm looking forward to communicating with you. And if you're still listening, I would love for you to screenshot and tag me at Instagram. I love reposting you guys when you're listening to the podcast. It's really heartwarming and I love it. Also, if you resonate with today's episode, be free, feel free to give us a rating. I really appreciate it. It helps me out so, so, so much. And send this to a friend, a colleague, an aunt, a cousin who you feel like would really benefit from this information. Either they're on the same wavelength as you and they could relate or if it's someone that you really want to share this information with that could really benefit from incorporating any of these things into their life, definitely send this their way so we can allow our message to grow, evolve, and bloom. And with that being said, I'm going to sign off here. I love you guys with so much love for me to you. I will see you next week on Unlimited Abundance.